Mr. President, I rise today, as I have every year at about this time, to uh, commemorate Black History Month. And we do that in many ways. Over a number of years, and I guess it's seven years for me, uh, we have, in our office, worked to uh, recognize individuals in Pennsylvania that have contributed so substantially to the advancement of our state and really, in many cases, the advancement of the nation. And this year, we recognize uh, Bill Strickland, a man whose approach to, uh, to work and to opportunity and, and to uh, the advancement of, of men and women in southwestern Pennsylvania and really because of his ideas, people across the nation, is, um, is significant, but it's also unique. And his accomplishments are of great consequence, not only to the African-American community, but to all Americans. From the age of 19, Bill Strickland of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, has worked tirelessly to improve the lives of those living in poverty, to give them a setting that they can thrive in and a future they can take uh, a lot of pride in. Bill grew up in the Manchester neighborhood of Pittsburgh. That's on the city's north side. Prior to the decline of industry in the city in the mid-1960s, the Manchester community was a solid uh, working class community, like so many in, um, in that, at that time in southwestern Pennsylvania and throughout the nation before the terrible loss of steel jobs, among other jobs that disappeared over just a number of years uh, in devastated communities. By the time Bill was in high school, the area around him had slid into urban decay and instability. Though surrounded by poverty, Bill's mother was determined to provide a safe environment for her family. And though she didn't have a high school diploma herself, Bill Strickland's mother held firm to the belief that a good education is a ticket to a better life. At Oliver High School, when he began his senior year, Bill had neither plans for uh, after graduation or a clear picture of what his future might look like. Then one day while walking down the hallway at school, Bill Strickland was attracted by the smell of, of all things fresh coffee. The coffee along with the sounds of jazz music led Bill to the art room in Oliver High School where he watched a pot being formed from a mound of clay on a turntable. Seated at the potter's wheel was Frank Ross, Oliver High's art teacher, who would become Bill's close friend and mentor. Over the next year, in the calm atmosphere of Frank Ross's well-lit art studio, Bill would develop a talent for ceramics. As importantly, it provided a safe and stable sanctuary from the chaos of the streets. At the potter's wheel, Bill Strickland found his passion. And although he didn't know it at the time, he was forming the beginning of a vision that would become Manchester Bidwell Corporation. In 1967, Bill graduated from Oliver High School and at the instance of Frank Ross applied to the University of Pittsburgh, where he was accepted, but only as a probationary student. Although he had begun his studies full time, Bill never lost the connection with his neighborhood. In the summer of 1968, as Manchester grappled with the racial tensions that swept many inner cities, Bill Strickland decided to open an art center in his neighborhood. He had seen, a, he had seen the power that a bright, orderly, safe place like Frank Ross's studio and the artistic work done there had on his own life. He wanted to give the young people of Manchester a place where they too could escape the effects of economic and social devastation and experience something beautiful. A conversation with a young minister working in the area led Bill Strickland to his first $25,000 in funding in the Manchester Craftsman Guild was born as an after-school art program in a donated row house on Buena Vista Street. It was not an overnight success, but Bill never gave up. When the young people in the neighborhood weren't immediately taken with ceramics, 
Bill redoubled his efforts, hitting the streets to reach out to as many people as he could and bringing them to his center. People noticed Bill's efforts and the popularity of the Guild grew. As more people came to the center, the center needed more clay, more wheels, and Bill started to secure more funding. Along the way, an interesting phenomenon occurred. Teachers began noticing that their students who regularly went to the Guild were doing better academically and behaving better in school. Without in intending to, Bill had stumbled across a simple yet empowering philosophy, and it is this. Environment shapes people's lives. By providing a safe space for young people in Manchester and by introducing them to the beauty of the arts, Bill was simultaneously inspiring a large-scale change in his community. Despite starting as a probationary student, Bill graduated from the University of Pittsburgh cum laude with a BA in history in 1970. He continued to work at the Manchester's Craftsman's Guild, and a few years after graduation, he, began, he became, I should say, director of the Bidwell Training Center, a school whose mission was to provide education in the building trades to disadvantaged and dislocated workers. When Bill assumed his role as head of Bidwell, what he discovered was a dilapidated warehouse in a parking lot and a $300,000 back tax bill from the IRS. But Bill saw its potential and didn't give up. He began to transform Bidwell into a forward-thinking school that offered his students a real chance to dramatically improve their lives. He realized that the, the, he realized that the changing job market required less focus on construction trades and redirected Bill, Bidwell's focus to the high-tech and medical industries. He also forged important partnerships with corporations like IBM, Heinz, and Bayer to design curriculum that would train the workers that needed employment and, and the workers that employers needed. While he worked to improve the staff and the quality of the education, the nature of Bidwell's funding meant that Bill could not address what he saw as one of the institution's central flaws the building itself. While funding for social projects was harder to come by in the 1980s, Bill was forced to lay off nearly one-third of his staff just to make payroll. But despite this setback, in his own eyes, Bill's vision was clearer than ever. He realized that what he needed to make Bidwell succeed was a center where students, faculty, and neighbors could be proud or I should say of which students, faculty, and neighbors could be proud. To achieve his dream, Bill contacted legendary Pittsburgh architect Tasso Castellas. And Tasso was a student of Frank Lloyd Wright. Uh, to design, he asked him to design a world-class center in one of the worst neighborhoods at the time in Pittsburgh. For $10,000, Bill commissioned the architect to build a model of what would later become the home of Manchester Bidwell Corporation, as the combined programs of the Manchester Craftsman Guild and the Bidwell Training Center would come to be known. Bill had a vision for his building and the conviction that the future of his cause lay in its construction. Just as he had done before, Bill took it upon himself to turn his dream into a reality and spearheaded a $6.5 million capital campaign. Model in hand, he employed the Pittsburgh corporate community to fund his dream. When the, when the city's corporate donors, who had supported him previously, told him that Manchester didn't need a spectacular center, he told them in known uncertain terms that it did. When he was told he needed matching funds to obtain his corporate pledges, he turned to the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania for additional support. In 1986, the new 62,000 square foot arts and career training center opened. Originally, uh, the center consisted of studios as well as classrooms, workshops, gallery spaces, and a 350 seat auditorium. Over the years, the building has expanded as Bill's vision itself expanded. In 1987, the Jazz Hall, which, is, which has seen performances from the likes of Dizzy Gillespie and Nancy Wilson, 
was added, and in 2003, the 40,000 square foot state-of-the-art greenhouse opened. The center currently provides training in fields as varied as gourmet food preparation, chemical, office, and medical technologies, and education arts programming in ceramics, design arts, digital arts, and photography. Today, this effort still thrives and shines. Bill Center and his students' success stories are a testament to the power of social entrepreneurship. What began as a mission to provide an escape from the ghetto has produced unparalleled results in education empowerment and community growth. Manchester Craftsmen's Guild Youth and Arts Program uh, survives and strives today to educate and inspire young people through the arts. 93%, 93% of high school students who participate in Manchester's Craftsmen's Guild Youth Arts Program, Youth and Arts Program, graduate from high school, a noticeable improvement over the nation's graduation rate of 75 and half percent. The Bidwell Training Center has changed lives by providing market-driven career training to disadvantaged adults in transition. In training programs, its training programs continue to place skilled technicians in middle-class jobs uh, in companies like Bayer, Mylan Labs, and Heinz. MCG Jazz, Manchester Bidwell's record label, has been nominated for seven Grammy Awards and has brought four home to the city of Pittsburgh. The orchids grown in the facility's greenhouse have won best in show at a Western Pennsylvania or orchid fair and are even available for purchase at uh, Whole Foods. And while they're learning medical coding or, or how to center clay, each student is fed a gourmet lunch prepared by culinary students in the center's top of the line kitchen. Realizing the opportunity to strengthen other communities and affect change on an even larger scale by using Manchester Bidwell's modern, uh, model of community and educational development as a template, Bill helped founded the National Center for Arts and Technology to replicate Manchester Bidwell's education model across the nation. The National Center for Arts and Technology collaborates with local nonprofits and businesses to assess their community's needs and then works together with the community to design a fitting center for arts and technology. Bill's Pittsburgh model has been replicated in the following cities, San Francisco, Cincinnati, Cleveland, New Haven, and Grand Rapids, Michigan. Along the way, Bill has gained some powerful backers, including Jeff Skoll, founder of eBay and the Skoll Foundation. The Skoll Foundation was one of Bill's earlier investors. It recognized the potential of his programs to drive large-scale positive change by using entrepreneurial discipline and methods. With the Skoll Foundation's help, Bill clarified his sales pitch that he could help solve problems faced in communities and had a strategic plan showing the benefits of working together and offering people meaning and hope through transforming experiences. Bill Strickland has said that, quote, environment determines behavior, unquote, and he has created a remarkable environment where men and women living in poverty are treated with dignity and respect. Knowing firsthand that poverty creates self-defeating assumptions and restrictive labels, but does not define a person's potential, Bill Strickland has dedicated his life to changing the lives of others by offering them hope, meaning, and belief in the power of their own creative possibilities. Bill's methods might be unconventional, but his results are success stories of epic proportions. And so in the Senate today, we express our gratitude to Bill Strickland for never giving up on poor kids or his vision for what they could be. His passion and his beliefs in the abilities of each and every individual that walks through his doors has touched the lives far beyond Manchester and Pittsburgh 
And thanks to Bill Strickland's tireless efforts, all, the, all this work has truly uh, made the potential to go across the world. Bill, thank you for your contribution to the city of Pittsburgh, to the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, and to our country.